Hello everybody! It's awesome to see so many people here for the Team Challenge Midway feedback stream. I'm joined with Dan McGabe, a senior vehicle artist at CIG at the moment. Um, lovely to meet you, Dan. Good to see you. Yeah, pleasure to be on here, Tim. Um, I was very excited um, when we were just quickly looking through some of the, the work before, so I'm really excited to get like stuck into it and start giving some feedback. Oh yeah, we've been doing some good prep. Um, honestly, I'm surprised by like what the people have put on there. Uh, not to jump the gun a little bit, but like I'm I'm excited to to see what we're gonna be diving into. Yeah, man, it's gonna be really really cool. Hell yeah. Um, and then um, just to give it a quick shout out, right? Like you you got in as a as a judge because of Lloyd, right? Yeah, yeah. So me and Lloyd worked together. Um, I guess those of those of you that know him know that he works at Cloud as well. So yeah we, we've been on the same projects for like god over a year now so i've had the pleasure of working closely with him for ages so i'm a big fan of lloyd's that's awesome me too man he's not gonna like to hear this but we'll have to deal with it anyway <laughs> yeah awesome and we got like a bunch of people in the chat as well um ryan is saying grab it grab a coffee yeah yeah maybe maybe a little bit too late but hey you do whatever you want right Lloyd is in the chat as well. We got Ricardo in here yeah, too. Yeah, it's cool. I'm like looking over at the at everyone. So I guess so. Yeah, we can interact with them really nicely through that. Oh, you, yeah, you yeah, spelt yeah. my uh, surname uh, wrong, by the way. It's it's CC, not CG. Oh, McCabe, not Gabe. Sorry about that. Gabe Newell. That would be meant. I wish I wish it was McGabe because that would be like Gabe and vibes. <laughs> Let me honestly. Oh, is that uh, is that? Anastasia's a Lloyd fan too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm assuming that we got like a, a a couple more like Lloyd fans in the chat as well. So it's easier to find Lloyd fans than Lloyd haters, to be honest. <laughs> oh, he says, "Oh, sharks, you're too kind." <laughs> yeah, cool. Nice to see you. Nice to see you and everyone else in the chat. Um, let's dive on over to our little introduction here. So. So we got the, the team challenge midway feedback stream. We're we're here um, because currently like seven seven teams of five, well four to five people each, um, have been working nonstop on their like awesome environments for the last last couple of weeks now. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is because this is a halfway of the challenge. We're going to be giving them some feedback, giving them some encouragement, and then we're going to uh, see them through to the end. So let's have a look. So yeah, just like a little recap here. So the team challenges are are designed to like bring other other artists together, right? In teams of like five, ideally. Sometimes people have to drop out for different cases and then you'll end up with like a team of four. But we want to let them come together and build like a really strong environment together as well. And then the teams have like five weeks to produce their environments, one week of pre-production, and then four weeks of actual production. So now the teams have just finished their second week of full-time production. So yeah, that's why we're calling it. Damn, that all of that stuff's well. been done in two weeks. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So they the first week is usually like the really intense one, right? Because yeah. you're Put into a like team. Out and stuff. Yeah, you're put into a team of strangers. You have to come up with like an idea together and then white box it all. Like it's freaking mental the first week. Yeah, for sure. Um but yeah. Um so yeah, like I said before, we have seven teams and we'll roughly spend around like 15 minutes just taking a little bit of time to see if we can like comment on some of the some of the stuff they're doing and maybe like help them along the way. And just also enjoying like the awesome work that they've been putting out as well. Very exciting stuff. Yes. Uh, Alex, Alex from, uh, I think it's team seven says, I swear, like it feels like we started the other day. Yeah, man, <laughs> these are, these are going to go so quick. They're crazy. Okay. So we're going to start out with team one. Team one is called stylized rocks. Uh, a little bit of a pun there. And their little story is the forge was constructed to make the heart of a god. The caves fill the fuel crystals and lava to create 
the container. However, the people making it were not ready for the power that they that they could harness and have to constantly contain the uncontainable. So yeah, we're kinda we're kinda we're probably gonna see like the the team trying to like contain the uncontainable, right? Okay. Let's have a look at the team. Yeah, this is cool. Okay. So I have a lot of like additional context, right? Um, I know where like the team started and all that stuff. So I'm really, really interested in seeing like the hand that's being made right now. Um, because that wasn't like a thing like in the earlier discussions, and that was only like a like a rel relatively recent recent addition. But I I really like it. It kind of kind of has, it kind of gives power to like the whole um, focal point here, which is awesome to see. Yeah, that that's really awesome. Like one thing about this that really interests me is like the chains coming out of the ball, like. And I look at it and I'm like, this is like super taut. Like, I'm trying to try trying to think about um, maybe how this first kind of like you see the crack in the front where all the crystals come out of it like appeared. Um, maybe um, it was just an idea, right? But maybe like one of the chains is like was too taut, and over time it's like cracked and pulled out. And then on that cool bridge you've got, maybe you have the chain kind of like like you know dangling over it where it's like popped out, and then like. It's like hit something on the way down, you know. Can you imagine like a big chain just mm. kind of like breaking that foreground silhouette a little bit? Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. There's, I definitely think there's an opportunity to have like some chains that are kind of slack and sloping around that were attached but aren't anymore, or attached to other things, right? Yeah. Or even, or even playing on that idea, right? Having a chain, like one of the chains has been like opened up, like it's still holding on, but like barely. Oh right? yeah, it's like bending like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. to really, really cool. yeah to really just play on the like the idea of like containing the uncontainable right mm -hmm. um that's yeah, awesome that's a, that's a good idea yeah you should definitely try and implement that yeah i also like i really like the forge underneath it because i remember in the first um in the first uh week i think the the team was still playing around with like a forge and they just had like a very um stereotypical like blacksmith forge right like one that you would see in like medieval times basically yeah um but now like they have like a forge that kind of works really well with like all the shapes of like the platform and then also the sphere above it right it kind of kind of starts working really well together which is really awesome to see um because one thing that see, i will... like yeah go ahead so i was just gonna say like the um this like where the person is that obviously helps us scale this whole area but it'd be cool to like give a bit more um like functionality to the like that space so we got the anvil kind of out by itself at the moment like i feel like that's probably quite an important thing so whether it comes like is made like slightly bigger or is integrated into into it a little bit more or is like given a bit more focal detail around it when you push it out of white box and I just think it mm -hmm. needs to be shouted a bit more that because that is the forging part of it, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think I think also with the with the crystals that you have, right? They're gonna add like a lot of light to the scene as well. But you probably want to be really careful with how much light you add to the environment and maybe have more of that light like focusing on maybe the anvil, right? I'm imagining like the fire coming out of the forge itself and then like silhouetting like the anvil or something yeah. like that. That could be cool. Instead of having like the the crystals that are like next to the staircase, right? I think they're just like a little bit too much. Whereas, yeah, you can you can use like those colors to highlight something different. For example, the anvil. I think that could work really well. Yeah, I can appreciate as well. Like when you have like these concentric kind of circles inside each other. Like I, I guess in these crystals have been put here to help solve that pinching point where the the curves are meeting at like a really tight angle maybe you like change the shape of the back half of the forge to kind of integrate into the stairs so it's almost like the stairs are part of the forge and they've built you know they've like come up a part of it at the moment they feel like separate things if you bring that together as one then it helps with that integration and also like helps make it feel like really sturdy like it's this big thing that 
they've had to work with um, and like really try and make it fit their needs because every it's doing everything it can to not fit theirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And now, now that you bring that up, I can kind of see that the the crystals are maybe like an attempt to like cover up like that empty area between the staircase and yeah. the forge, right? But if you just like scale up the forge and then maybe scale in like the staircase to make them like yeah, like integrate it all together. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And solve that problem. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. There's some. There's going to be some really interesting. Um, assets that are going to be built for this right because i feel that the forge itself is so unique like it has like a lot of character that um you're gonna need like generic like uh things like the barrels and the tables and all that stuff right but it would be interesting to see if you can somehow like it attach like the same sort of like flair that you're doing to the forge as well to kind of integrate them all together um that would be really interesting to see from from my end yeah, for sure, man. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, honestly, like, I that love... That shot's so nice. Yeah, that shot where you have, like, the bright red at the bottom and then, like, the blue in the background and, like, the sphere, like, nicely in the middle. It, it needs, like, a light pass though. I think um, before you guys start, like, I think the one of the highest priority things you need to do right now is, like, just look at bringing the mood down in here. You know what I mean? Like, get those crystals glowing really subtly and, like, make it feel really dark and then have that kind of, like, cascade of light down into that central funnel. And then and then you can work with the shapes. Like, you can work within that context because at the moment, like, you might put a load of detail into somewhere and then it gets lost in the in the shadows once you've done a light and pass anyway. So you've got a really good spot here for where you're at in terms of time. I just... I definitely make light in... Uh, something you do first before you carry on yeah i agree definitely makes a huge difference as well um yeah and then i think i think you brought this up like earlier as well where like some of the assets like do get lost right i can see that there's also like a little hammer yeah, which is probably yeah, like a that. really huge hammer right if you're a daring person but it kind of gets lost by like the big shapes around it so yeah. what you could do in this case is Try to, well, scaling it up would be like an easy fix, right? To a certain extent. But I think what you could also try and play around with is just like clustering in certain areas. So you have like clusters of like, hey, this is like a, a weapon rack or something like that. And then you have like a bunch of weapons there. Um, and then also like the barrels, like clustering them in like a certain position that that is like the storage area, something like that, right? So that gives like more character to the individual areas too, rather than just having them all scattered for maybe no real reason at all at this point, right? Yeah, it needs like yeah, the you need to think about the space and how it's used, and then the kind of yeah. dressing for it comes like automatically after that, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, Middle is uh, coming into chat and saying like, "Can we see a blacksmith working on a crystal? That would be awesome." But we're all environment artists, right? And I would I would dread having to work on a character in like five five silly weeks of doing a challenge like this. But it would be yeah. cool to see though. Um You could like see... allude to like you know, a blacksmith has worked on a crystal. Maybe you have like a like what if you had oh. like in the hand like a, a kind of like a, a waste bin, you know, like when blacksmiths they'll like toss like pieces of like cut off metal or whatever into like a big bucket or whatever and they'll melt that back down later. Maybe you have like bits of crystal, like in like this big drum or something similar to that, where and it kind of and then like maybe like one on the anvil, so it looks like you know this isn't something's in the middle of being cast, and then like oh here's the cutoffs, and then you know you know think about it like that, like what happens with this for you know what's the next step? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I'm I'm just thinking about like I'm imagining like what if. What if they were trying to do something with the crystals and you can see like crystal shards like next to the anvil or something yeah right yeah because that can also tie into like what we were talking about before where you want like a little bit more focal like you want you want like the anvil to be like a little bit more of a focal point you can kind of use those crystal shards as like a point of like hey look at this section yeah i think as well the anvil like it's very like it's a very normal anvil at the moment it would be cool if it was like more grand like larger wider like this big like you, almost something that multiple blacksmiths could work on at the same time you know what i mean like really 
make it feel like the like imagine you were coming to visit this blacksmith like the hero of the stories like i'm coming to like ask for like a weapon and they feel like they just hear the big banging of the anvil and they just see it like dominating like this like central space as they walk across the bridge like Mm -hmm. at the moment it's just a normal anvil so it doesn't feel special like you should give it like more more importance yeah 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 100 percent. it seems like um people in the chat have been saying that we're running into like some some internet issues over here um it might be on my end though Uh, so i'm seeing if i can like remedy it in the meantime um but do let me know if it gets better or if it stays like the same that would be really helpful um yeah and then adam is saying was thinking there could be like a, a steampunk blacksmith robot there too oh my god adam you're making it so much worse than it already is go away with these ideas <laughs> adam you troll please, please do it. awesome okay um yeah this is awesome i think we've seen like most of the screenshots here right i just want to throw out like awesome work team like this is really amazing to see i love i love the colors i i love like the compositions and i love the the style of like the assets that are um that are on display too right like i like how all the circular elements start to fit together the stuff that we brought up like can definitely like take that to the next level right but i like the foundation that's already there yeah for sure the hand is like oh it's perfect i love it yeah that's a that's a really good choice i gotta i gotta say um because we well i i got to i got to see some sneak peeks of like the hand like in like the first couple of stages and i was like oh no i was a little bit worried but like that is that is kind of normal well, what happens here, right? Like during these team challenges, like you get to see so many iterations in such a short time. And yeah, I just want to, yeah, massively congratulate you on like just sticking with it and making it look really good. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It's time to move on to team two, Sleepy Peasants. Nice. So their story is uh, a long gone empire rises from the sand its ancient forges are fired once more using the souls to produce grotesque war machines okay so yeah we're, we're getting some sort of like transformation from like yeah souls to like war machines very very cool idea i gotta say yeah let's have a look awesome so i have like a massive gate with like big statues next to it and then like a a boat going into the gate as well oh is that yeah what's his name i don't know if you know but like the like where the the ferryman that takes the souls to like um oh my god yeah i know what you mean oh i know what you mean whatever (laughs) Yeah, yeah 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 because i i didn't like i didn't really click with that as as i was as i was uh going through like the the team's channels like it didn't really click up until this point when i read the story as well so super awesome um I yeah there is the, like um the like the top left shows it so well the the kind of like rail system to like take stuff in and out like the little the green glow it's just a really yeah. nice detail that yeah 100 percent I think I think this is really going to come to life with like some some like ghost or something floating around, right? Like you you can see the souls being drained into like the the forge. Um it's not necessarily oh, like yeah, yeah. environment art, right? But it's going to it's going to really sell the image of just having having like streams of souls going in. Yeah, I think it needs like a you can just allude to it, right? As well, you don't have to like go too crazy. You could just have a really low hanging like green mist that's kind of like trade tapering off i don't know mm. there's like a f- there's like quite a few ways you could do it right um but i imagine like there's probably it depends if you want it to move making it move would probably be the best so like a particle system would be amazing but i appreciate that's more difficult but there's definitely like yeah. quicker solutions if that 
turns out to be too time consuming. Yeah, you can you can do like a lot of trickery with just like uh, an atmospheric hide fog and like really playing around yeah. the values. You can make yeah, it like sure. really low hanging. That's gonna be like really quick to do, right? Um, yeah, no, I think I think you're definitely right. Like just having having that fog, that like being ominous looking fog that really ties into the story, is definitely gonna help with that. I think um, the blue needs to change and the lighting as well. I don't know why, but this mm -hmm. just screams like the dark portal to me. You know, from World of Warcraft, mm. like, and I really yeah, yeah. think that you kind of play into that a little bit, and like maybe get the those, maybe get the bring the greens in more. Right at the moment, we've got like this kind of like light blue, which is quite a nice color, really. Like, get it like a deeper green, and then maybe set fire to those scales that are outside, which I'm sure was part of the plan anyway, but. Oh, Vitaly from the team is saying that the statues are literally like hero titans of tomb, tomb kings. Oh, I have no idea. Like, but uh, yeah, people are getting like Warhammer vibes as well, which is like fucking awesome. Do you know be awesome? Um, I've noticed that the the statues are symmetrical at the moment. Um, maybe have one of their arms like fallen off on like one of the sides and just have it like on the floor. Like it had, like mm. broken off or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you've already alluded that this place isn't like in perfect condition with the pillar in the foreground that's fallen as well. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a little, a little bit of a disrepair, right? Like play into that a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I think there's also like a comparison as well where the team wanted to get our opinion on like the size of the boat. Well, so. This is the first image where the boat is like pretty prevalent and like pretty pretty in the scene. And then we have this one where it's like more to the I'm side. I'm not sure about all. the boat, you know. I'm just not sure about it at the moment. I don't know what it is. I just it needs more context. I think I don't. Yeah. I think where it is is like part of it, but I think why is it? You know, what I mean, like what what like is it? How did it get there? How is it leaving? Does it fly? Like. I, I don't know. I feel like I need more context as to what it's doing there. Maybe you have it like, like some rails like coming out of the thing. I'm assuming this is like I don't know like whether you you were correct, Tim, with the idea that it's the ferrying boat for the souls, or whether it's, mm. or is this one of the war machines? And I think as a viewer, I shouldn't be confused on that. I should whichever one it yeah. is, it should be really clear. So. If it was the war machine, I would expect it to come out of the factory. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But so the that's why of it makes me think maybe it has it came out of it? Like I'm not sure. Yeah, so so that's why I'm thinking that it's feeding souls to it, right? Um, because it's going into into the factory. If it was coming out of the factory, I would love to see like um well first of all it turned around and then also more of them too, so that we can get like an mm -hmm. indication of like, oh, this is a factory line rather than it's like one time thing, right? Um But yeah, yeah I do I agree, know. like in, in general, with like I'm not really sure what the boat adds to like the whole story, right? If you if you think about it that way. I feel like if you just did like a really cool blocky like tank and then reused kind of maybe the cobra from the front of the boat, you could make some kind of like big siege vehicle like coming out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, or even maybe make it look like. Yeah, or even have like um a massive amount of like these statue-looking guys, maybe with like a different weapon, right? Just scale them down and then have like a horde of them coming out of the portal or something like that. So, so it's like uh, in in the chat they yeah. said it's floating, um, and they're planning some VFX for it. Yeah. I just I would just be careful because at the moment I don't. Yeah, it's just a. I'm that doesn't sure. solve the issue that we're having currently. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's like okay, you can add VFX to it, and then you can you can have it floating, but then we don't, we still don't know why. Yeah, it's, it's the same the the, same situation. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. So... Maybe just think about the boat a little bit more and how you're going to make that integrate with the scene. Um, like I think it even needs to be half in that big gate thing, or not in the scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, and I think if you really want to sell, like, if the boat is, like, a, a war machine, right, that is being built, like, I would love to see, like, at least two, right, to indicate that this is not just, like, one, but, like, it's actually yeah. being, mm -hmm. like, produced at, like, a, a bigger rate. But then going with your, um, with your suggestion, having, like, one halfway coming out of the gate then, right, and then seeing the yeah. tail end of, like, the second one or something like that leaving the frame, that could, that could sell the idea of it um yeah yeah for sure i also think this pillar that's kind of like it's kind of like breaking this really nice shape we've got at the moment this one here right yeah yeah, yeah i don't know what like I, I understand that it's actually in it's it's not in the doorway but at the moment the kind of forced perspective of this particular shot makes it look like it is maybe it's just not a very flattering angle but this does feel like the hero angle it feels a bit bizarre that you'd put like a pillar like yeah. kind of pressed in there maybe just pull it back and use it to break the form of that flat surface that's kind of next to it yeah yeah um, i think this is something that the team was also experimenting with as well i think they didn't have the pillar there before but i think i agree just leaving like the massive space open and then just really play with like stronger light more particle effects and like a bunch of stuff coming in and out of the gate right because that's yeah. that's the story um and then just like getting getting everything basically out of the way to see what is happening with that gate well with the forge right it's not a gate i think uh one thing i will i you know like pre-chat before um before this I, we spoke about the candles didn't we and it was like the candles do a really really good job of selling the scale i'm just not sure why they're there do you know what i mean they, they they're doing a good job but i'm not sure what their purpose is like i i've got like this weird like who's going around just placing a bunch of candles like this is it like are they f i i appreciate that they might be for like the souls of the dead and people are visiting to like put candles down but why would they be so randomly placed and why would it you know like mm. do you know what i mean yeah maybe yep. at like the base of the pillar where you have those like big stone bricks like they place the candles around them to like the gods or whatever above them yeah yeah, it's like a, it's like a shrine or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that could work. Um, I'm also thinking about like, what if you just put like a bunch of like random like tombstones or gravestones in the foreground and then have candles like next to them, right? Like really selling the connection between like the candles and like the dead, right? Um, kind of plays into like the, the overarching theme with like the souls as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do. I do think the, um, the top two thirds of this frame are really 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 strong i just think it's the bottom third that needs needs a lot of attention at the moment yeah 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 and i think um because the team has been saying that they're planning like vfx right um i would honestly for this scene i would honestly start looking into that already because it is such like a big selling factor of the whole thing where if you yeah, can and if it get doesn't work stuff, you're gonna have to change stuff it's exactly leave it too late exactly so you probably want to test that like as soon as possible and then see if that changes anything or not right um but yeah, yeah to, to yeah, come back sure. to the question what the team was saying or like what the team was asking for like in my opinion if you go for the smaller boat then you get like more scale and you can also fit more boats like going or like not boats but, like war machines or whatever they are right coming out of the forge because that that to me is like a big selling thing. I don't know how you feel about that, Dan. I, I'm I'm honestly team no boat and no boat. Mm, try and try and make like a war machine coming out of this thing, and then maybe put like some train track looking things coming in to make it feel like that's how they feed, how they um how they like pull out the the war machines, and yeah, and they've got like the they use like the the top. Um, I feel like the top should be used, like these rails coming in. That's how they get the souls in, and then the war machines come out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it feels to me. And then you've got like, and you could probably do more with those hanging things. Like they look white box at the moment, but I really like. It's the first thing I mentioned. You know how much I like the three green kind of like gates in the top left. There's one in the top right as well. Mm -hmm. The little, the little portal things. I just love the idea yeah. that that's the souls just being fed in, and there's just tons of souls always coming in. And then this oh, one, yeah. you know, you've got them coming in really like not fast, but 
you know a reasonable speed and you got this really slow like um like big behemoth war machine slowly coming out on some rails to go to the war or whatever yeah. and it, it feels like the full production line there and you have like people looking up at their souls of their family members like crying putting the candles down to the gods and then maybe like they vandalized it and that's why the the arm of one of them's fallen down maybe that's how you add interest into the back of the scene so you know that 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 second dude on the right is quite noisy over there now because of how far away is the guy on the left reads perfectly but the guy on the right looks a bit noisy so maybe that right arm falls and then that allows you to add some where the small boat is in this shot some mm -hmm. kind of like distribution of like detail in the bottom of the shot without losing like the the storytelling aspect and actually yeah, adding yeah. to it as well yeah and also just like a little bit of uh asymmetry right i feel like that's all yeah like a nice way you of can't breaking go up. wrong with that yeah um shazara in the chat is saying uh everything being so big makes it all feel a little small yeah i think i think that's why why dan also pointed out like the candles right like they're the thing that we like instinctively can relate to and it makes everything else feel big so i don't necessarily feel that the candles should go right because that's like a good relation Where for they are. us but it's just like the way that they're placed right yeah like look at the ones around that pillar at the moment like like they're not even textured and we know they're candles yeah i like having oh. a couple in the foreground because it helps make the read as well yeah vidali is um vidali is a is a part of the team right and they're saying that the statues are in fact the guardians and they're one of the pro machines that are produced here okay so if if that would be the case then i would go with like them actually coming out of the gate rather than only being statues on the side right yeah they just feel like shrines at the moment yeah exactly just you know make them small make like a smaller version and make it look like they're like marching or something like that and then like copy paste like hundreds of them next to each other right depending on what scale you want them to have um and that's it right now now we have like a, a forge that's like producing like these things um because right now that's not really clear right like they just look like oh. they're like guardians for it yeah lloyd's put a really nice idea in which kind of lends into what i said about having like a train track thing he said um the original idea was that the statues were produced and like put on like a platform lying down being transported out see i like that i think that's weird that that works so well yep yeah i do that. that also removes like all the busy work of doing anything with like posing characters and all that stuff so i like that <laughs> yeah you could have the arms taken off like the arms are put on later or something yeah 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 i like that yeah something something around that right like that's what i'm missing currently is that i want to know like what goes in and what comes out and like right now i have an i have like an okay a clear idea of like what's coming in right but that's only because we know the story not necessarily the visuals yet um that's where like the vfx is going to play a big role but i don't have an idea of what's coming out of the factory right now yeah that needs like that's forge. the thing that needs solving for this scene yep like it, that needs solving and then the rest of the the lower foreground that we're talking about will kind of all slot into place yeah 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 but it's a yeah. fun time I, I i would be pretty stoked if this was my project after two weeks so you guys should be really happy with yourselves oh yeah yeah that's the thing right like we we spend like a whole time talking about like understanding the scene and like we're trying to get to grips with it but like i like what is happening here right like we're seeing like some really cool textures coming in um like the the stone the stone pillars like the stone walls and like the statues are getting like really nicely detailed as well i know that the gate went through like a massive overhaul i think in the last week which has really paid off as well um so yeah yeah just massive massive shout out for the team right and oh, we got like a couple more images as well here for, I, like, I just wanted to sculpts really mm. quick rule number one of doing pipes if you, if you could go back to the shop before see the pipes mm -hmm. all going in um yeah and like um chain very just a bit more variance in the scale of them and that just do that and it'll like look 10 times better yep break it up a little bit more 100 yep. percent yeah and then um shazar is actually coming in with an idea like what is the statue is coming out but like grabbing the walls and pulling itself out so it's like just the one thing coming out of it 
Oh, that would be that could be cool, but that kind of takes away from like the factory element, right? And it makes it like my god, so difficult because that's like a unique thing that you have to sculpt or pose. Oh, it's just a technical nightmare, to, especially to execute that well in two weeks. It's gonna be a nightmare. But yeah, if you had more time, it would be cool. And then Justin is saying, um, maybe maybe something reminiscent of the funeral procession going in and a bunch of machines walking out in the opposite direction. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that, that's I think what we were kind of hinting towards, right? Like what what Lloyd was saying as well. Like maybe have them produce like a bunch of um, a bunch of soldiers, basically, right? But they come out like lying flat on. Uh, on transportation bays or whatever and you have like a bunch of souls going into the forge something something like that could be interesting yeah sure 100 percent. we got some uh sculpts here as well uh they're looking nice and tasty some maybe if you do do things. the um the platform idea and like remove the boat mm -hmm. you could um you could still reuse a lot of this um z brush work on the platform, like you could put the Cobra on the front of it, and you could put like, oh you yeah, know, you could just use it. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you could, you could use that for like I don't know, so many things, right? Let's just like cut it off in a different way, add it to a tombstone or something like that. You can, you can make that work. Yeah, sure. No, cool stuff. Uh, yeah, great work, great work, guys. Two weeks left. So it's going to be really interesting to see seeing this evolve yeah, over time so as well. Yeah, I'm so excited to see what this looks like. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to switch up to team number three. Uh, team number three is called Ubihard. I don't know where that name comes from, but we're rolling with it. <laughs> um, and they're currently working with the story of an abandoned forge built on the burial site of an ancient god who falls into disrepair after using up all the divine energy okay okay and this is what they're working with right now ah just opening oh, shot damn. really dramatic really contrasty and i love it you know like it's feels so yep. good already yep you guys have got a fantastic um direction with this Oh, Vadim in the chat is saying Ubi soft, Ubi hard. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, uh, are these guys all like, um, are, they, are they all students or is there like industry people in here as well? Um, so I think maybe, maybe Loy can chime in in the chat here. Um, but I think we on average have like one professional in each team, but most of them are like students. Okay, cool. So, I think like the, the variation, like often depends like on, on the teams, right? I think we might have teams with like multiple industry people, but yeah, I think the majority are still students. Sick. Yeah. So team two is all students, for example, the team that we just looked at. Well, it's awesome. God damn, well done. You won't be students yeah. for long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Lloyd is saying like, yeah, we try to have like one professional per team if possible. Yes. I see. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, but this this one, what are your thoughts, Dan? I mean the composition's fantastic, isn't it? The the even just down to the the rocks and like the, the variance in scale and seeing them all float just sells it all like there's a lot going on in the foreground as well i feel like i've stumbled on this and i shouldn't be here you know what i mean like i was like <laughs> i was like hanging around in a cave and i'm like oh what's through here and i'm like oh okay i'm gonna turn around like um i think in terms of places i'd go with it uh, it's kind of i guess obvious but the lava right i think that's clearly quite whip um yeah i'm really really excited to see what happens when you get that warm light in coming in like it already is on the bottom left and it's working really well there mm -hmm. um yeah i think what is that underneath the hammer is that like a forge or something what is that yeah that looks to be an anvil so we got like a little yeah, pedestal with like an anvil in the center of it i think that needs to like either i think that just needs to be refined like what what is that you know are the, like how, are you having the hammer as the focal point or the anvil 
is obviously the hammer, right? But like, why is the hammer yeah. there? Like, maybe you just what was the what was the like wording again? Let me just go read it real quick. Built oh, sorry, I can take site. you. Oh, it is an abandoned forge. Okay, I see. Yep. Yeah, I think it need more needs to be done to like allude to the forge side of it. Maybe the forge is like kind of off to the left, right? You know, what I mean, maybe that or like further down, like by the lava off the bridge or whatever. Yeah, I'm like I sure. honestly feel that like the forge could almost be like thrown away assets like in the foreground because you got like a bunch of really nice foreground elements which are like like discarded blades and all that stuff. Yeah. I feel like you could have like a foreground element that is just an anvil. And then just be the, the pedestal is just purely for the hammer, right? Like the hammer is like something that they forged, like it's a masterpiece and then something happened and like they never got to use it. But we don't know the story behind it. They're really cool about that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I 100% I agree. I don't think that anvil needs to be there, right? And, but you can still use it in like an element in like the rest of the scene for sure. Yeah, I like the I, stairs as well, right in the top top of it. Like that's kind of it looks like you know there was there was something here and now it isn't, <laughs> and we've got this here instead. It's like feels like there's like multiple generations of storytelling here. Like it was something, it was like a cave first, and then it was like you know you have that staircase at the top, and then like the sta stairs were destroyed, and then probably at the same time the the big skull arrived, right? And now yeah. And now you have this extra thing that's been built and then you have like the all the props around it that's been abandoned i feel like it's multiple generations of storytelling which is really really nice to see in one shot yeah 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 100 percent. like you got the layers of history like kind of baked into the environment right um what i also like is like the like you mentioned like the, the skull in the background with like the helmet still on right it adds like this nice little glint but it doesn't feel like it's overwhelming to like the composition but everything is like really nicely balanced already which feels freaking amazing um vadim is also asking in the chat is this an overpaint or is this in 3d and this is in 3d i don't think the team has painted anything in this screenshot they did some overpaints before but i don't think this has been painted over which is freaking amazing. It would Especially, be, I think one thing that would be good for this environment, this shot's great, but more shots, like, and then we <laughs> You can... just want to see more, huh? <laughs> yeah, I want to see more, and then obviously when you change the camera angle, then you need to add more elements and, like, add a, change things up a little bit. Like, making yeah. one shot is, like, as successful as this is great, but like, let's see if we can get it to work in, like, multiple angles, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of looking if we have like multiple angles, but I think, yeah, this is a killer shot, right? Um, that is maybe something like a note for the team, right? If they want to take that further after the challenge as well, um, that they can maybe make like a another shot, maybe with like pre-existing um, assets that they already have, where you can just like combine like a couple things. Um, would be interesting to, to explore. Um, I was also going to say that what I also really love is that you have like a a lot of really like hard surfaces right like a lot of rocks like everything's like carved into rock and then you have like this this rib cage that still has like the fabric like hanging between it yeah. um just really good of breaking like all the hard surfaces with like something like very organic and it looks like really nice works out really maybe, well maybe maybe some like i see why they think it might be an overpaint um based just on the rocks on the right hand side of this shot does seem quite brushy some of that stuff um mm. i can see where that person was coming from um i would i would really like to see some more like formations in the cave um you know at the moment it looks like it, i look at the like helmet on the skull and the skull it looks like super realistic um i think and you've got like these rock sculpts underneath that look really good but none of that's really coming through at the moment like i i, I don't really see much I see mm. good primary forms, but I don't see much second. I see a little bit of secondary, but I don't see any tertiary really. Like there's no like stalagmites yeah. or tights or like you know big cracks or anything. Like sorry, there is cracks, but like there's no like there's no like surface to it. I don't know how to how to explain it. Like the sculpts look like they do, but it's being lost in the render. 
No, I think I think the scolds are are just not implemented yet. That's what I'm assuming. I have no additional context here, right? So I'm just assuming that the sculpts haven't made it in yet. Um, yeah, I because mean, if they haven't, then great. Yeah, because oh, if we're really see good. if we're gonna see like all this stuff happening, it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I like it. Also, like the the floating rock idea that the team had, like around like mm. the hammer, it kind of works. I was like skeptical at some point, but now seeing it in like practice, like it works really well. I think. Just the scale of the rocks like can be tweaked a little bit, right? Because some of them are like really big, where they might even be like somewhat conflicting with the hammer, where you just like make them smaller, um, and maybe like have like a lot of small pebbles like next to it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. There needs to be some more size variation. I think as well, like in, with, and this goes for every team. Um, I always, I'm always a massive believer in like having some kind of movement in your environment i think it adds so much to it whether it's like light flickering that's the easiest one but for a shot like this like having the rocks like move or like rotate and very oh, slowly absolutely rotate like anti-gravity yeah. you know like yeah 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 and like the hammer's kind of like moving a little bit and then maybe like for the the shot you have it like all fall to the ground or something like that and then come back up and it's almost like there's some kind of magic that possesses the place oh that, that could gods, be cool when the when yeah, the yeah. god's paying attention so like when they use the forge they have to pray to the god and then all the hammer floats and it all kicks into life and then maybe the mouth opens which pulls the lava into the scene which heats up the forge but then when the god's not happy the mouth closes and the like all of it tumbles down yeah 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 there's there's like super cool stuff you can do with this just having like the rocks animated and flowing and like a slow panning zoom to like the cave or something like that as you come in Oh my god, there's so much cool stuff you can do with that. Mm, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Um Oh, Dom is saying there's only one first rock in there at the moment. Okay, so there's still rocks are heavily work in progress. Well that rock is doing work. It's yes. Doing some great... <laughs> it's doing a lot of work at the moment if there's only one. Yeah. yeah. Hundred percent. Um yeah. I can't wait to no. see this finally done. It's gonna be really, really cool. Yeah, this is this is this is awesome so far. Like I, I really like it. Like the the one thing that I noticed only after like a long time looking at it is like the chains like the chains that kind of hold like the the head back mm. i think there needs to like i almost want to see like the the change having an impact on like the dents of like the helmet or something like that that you can really feel that like they're strapped back because now they just feel like they're going across the face but they don't really i don't know they don't feel impactful to me at this point I think that's fair. I think they like, yeah, they want to feel like they're actually pressing against stuff. Like when you yeah. use like a zip tie in real life, you like if I put like a zip tie on my like wrist now and tightened it, like the skin would like depress around it. I think when you have chains, like that happens obviously less so because it's linkage. But like it would be cool if like part of the skull was like being cracked. Maybe the mouse a good place to do it, right? Maybe it's like the chain around. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, oh, can let's see. Kind of like um, like here. Um, which show? I don't think we can at the moment. Uh, oh, okay. Hold so on. just there we go. Yeah, yeah. So like around here, I would. Um, oh, where it goes into the mouth or something like that. Yeah, like maybe it like comes around the side. You know, when a horse like um, has got like a what what are they call mouthpiece. The things right? that horse. Yeah, that uh, yeah, we'll call it a mouthpiece. I don't know what the official term is, <laughs> but maybe it's like been pulled back into the mouth, and that's like how it's been restrained. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. would also help resolve the where this goes because at the moment it's kind of disappearing into the light. If it kind of folded back into this here, it would kind of make more sense that it's being like linked to the back wall of this cave. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's just something that um. That I barely noticed, right? But like after looking at it, for yeah, a it's while, a fair point. Yeah, it's um, it is good though. Like it is good that it's barely noticeable because you oh, don't yeah. want like the attention to go all to the skull, right? But the skull is still like visible once you start looking around. Really well laid out this this scene. Um, so let's have a look at some other images, right? We we kind of had a quick glance at the rock sculpts. Looking. Looking nice. I can't wait to see them in because that's going to make like a huge impact. Yeah, same. It's going to be awesome. And then we got some, uh, I think this is all like foreground elements, right? So we got like a bunch of like random weapons 
that are yeah this is nice this is like classic environment art props you know what i mean like you yeah. have to make tons like really fast and like you know it's not like a you're not playing chivalry or you know for honor like the gate you know like this is really effective use of your time to just get something that looks good in the foreground without like without spending your time like yeah, inefficiently 100 percent yeah, because what it comes down to, like, I know that there's always a difference between what you want to put on your portfolio, right? But if we're talking about, like, in surface, in service of the environment, I think you can get away with a lot. Like, it's just oh yeah, basic texture, just it's more about, like, a silhouette, right, than anything else. So, yeah, you can yeah, just really well try here. these out. Yeah. Sure. And I think uh, if you're in an interview, most, or if not any art director would appreciate that, you know, they might look at the try count and go, it's a bit spicy for a foreground element, like some of them. Um, but yeah. in terms of like, you can tell that these are being knocked up quick and they're just, they're delivering really solid silhouettes and um, that's all they're needed 100%. for. And they're performing well. So, yeah, Where's that fair, card? Fair, good work. Did you spot the card then? Uh, yeah, it is there. It's um, it's kind of here at the moment. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. my my screen on. Under maybe here you just want to use it more, right? Maybe you want some more stuff over here, like maybe poking up a little bit, maybe break this line with something coming up. Yeah, or like, or like I was expecting it to be like a, a much more chunky shape in in the silhouettes. Yeah, right? because right now so. it kind of disappears with like the rest of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, and again, yeah. like it just needs to be like a foreground element, right? So you can kind of just scale it up until the point where it kind of feels good. I'd also say once you get those cool rocks that you've been working on make sure you're breaking the surface of the lava with them and like placing them around the base of this like uh cylindrical element here because at the moment you got this really solid consistent line but once you get some like if you scale those rocks down and really start getting clever with them this yeah. this will look like it's like built on a platform of rock and then you know you can like break the like surface of the lava like a tiny bit you know Oh yeah, it's gonna you can have a lot of fun though placing them. Oh dude, yeah, that's gonna be so fun to really break up that surface and play around with all the rocks. Sure. That'd be good. Uh let's see, do we have some other screenshots? No. So awesome work team. Um great yeah, job man. so far. Really strong composition. Like, yeah. I'm excited to see more of this, honestly. So well done. You should be proud of your progress so far. Hundred percent. Then we're going to go to Team 4. Um, team 4 is... Oh, sorry. Team Fortified Alliance. Nice. Uh, they're currently working on a largely abandoned but still operating forge. Uh, servants to the gods used to cast and mold weapons for the gods with flowing magic. Awesome. Okay. Dang. Okay. I love the pink boys already. I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, this is cool. Yeah, it's definitely a really cool concept, isn't it? Let's have a look. Yeah, I think I think before the stream, right? Like we were kind of already like in awe with like the the lava and how good it already looks, right? Yeah, there was a few things I wanted to point out though. Like, if you mm -hmm. look here in this part of the texture, it looks kind of like, um, like textly. You know what I mean? It's like quite pixely, mosaicy almost. Um, but like the like art direction wise, it it looks really good. I think there could be a bit more done to like make it feel more realistic so like these little rocks for example you would never have rocks sitting like this um smaller rocks will all and it's good that you have them because it helps with the scale read but they need to be like gathering in the cracks right they need to yeah. be gathering in like areas like this and like here like that you're not just gonna have a rock sit here because it would like roll down immediately and sit here somewhere and um, i don't know what you've used to make this um, at least these. Um, if you've used like a terrain blending, that's great. You can just paint in here. If you've done this with like substance designer and then like pasted the same asset around, then maybe you need to just look at the way you're distributing these. But yeah, whatever workflow you're using, just make sure you're, you know, that like, all this stuff would be down falling in here. And I bet if you spend some time just getting them placed nicely, this rock will just look ten times better. And then the lava to the actual flat lava texture it just it just looks a bit low res at the moment and i just think yeah i think with a bit more i think love, it's it it's very stripy right it has like that directional yeah. stripiness yeah. to it which is probably not helping yeah 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 definitely i'm i'm not exactly sure what's causing that 
but I can imagine that it's probably not displaying how they want it to at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but overall, like, really good look already. Like, and yeah, especially if you look at, like, the, the main shot, right? Just, like, the stark mm. contrast between, like, so the red nice. and then, like, the blue. Ah, oh, it's so good. Like, this section here looks exceptional. Like, the art direction for this is really solid. That's what I mean yeah. by, like, the... Like, from a mid... Like, the close read's not, like, amazing, but, like, the mid read is... Oh, my God. It's really, really strong. Really good. Yeah, and then especially... I'm imagining, like all the areas like in the back as well to be dressed in the same way i think or at least yeah like, with the same oh my god if they assets. just oh my god whoever did this like for the next two weeks your job is to do it again <laughs> for all of this here yeah i'm yeah, sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no you're well, well that's the thing right like this is honestly genuinely what happens in the industry as well like if you're good at something like you're gonna get more of those jobs right oh yeah i, I had a friend who um he like he got given a task to like remake like a, a bunch of trees um because our old trees were like old and he's like oh, i hate i hate trees and he did it <laughs> and he's like i'll do it because it's obviously his job and he did a really good job of it and then they were like oh why are you there you might as well do the rest of the trees and he's like no and i'm like oh you know you're now the foliage guy unfortunately don't be good at something if you don't like it but i no, hate... knowing rock enthusiasts i bet the person who did this would be very happy to hear that they could do more yeah, yeah i hate how close to my life that foliage <laughs> story is that was exactly what happened to me as well they were like hey uh we got some trees that need to make made done and they were so happy with them and i was like oh fuck well and like that's i think a couple know. months later i was like a foliage artist <laughs> that's what happens man that's the it's a it's a real problem you guys need a that's support it. group out there yeah speed trees <laughs> trying to stop it but it's not it's not quite there yet <laughs> i think um back onto this scene though like these swords i really like them i just don't think the, the i guess the vertex color blending is it doesn't read how is expected at the moment pretty Very uniform patchy. at the moment right yeah yeah like it should heat up it should just like the only thing that should be changing here is the albedo and like subsurface scattering you don't need this patchy like texture blending in like yeah. if you look at like hot metal it doesn't heat up in patches it heats up like, lint, Pretty like, uniform, like linear right? fall off yeah 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 or even like i could i could see the patchy texture working if you then have like a really like solid like hot metal tip or something like that, right where you can where mm. you can blend like the molten metal with like some patchy metal and then it's like just cold that could potentially work but yeah i think i think your gradient solution is probably still like better though i think there's too so many of easier. them as well yeah i think there needs to be like half or a third of the amount i feel like they're just spammed at the moment which is fine okay. because it's white box and it's very easy point in time to like change it but i feel yeah, like I you see these big like structural elements here how amazing would this be if this was just brought all the way forward to like here and then you yeah. like got all of this giant scale built in and then use the swords for like the background like and then you can lose like these these all these swords here and just have this giant like structure here because at the moment it doesn't feel like this path goes anywhere and if yeah. you brought this in it would feel like it was attaching to the bottom of this structure yeah i like that what you could also do is just like scale up one sword and make it like unique right that is just like mm. a, a sword of a fallen god or something like that and we're just yeah. looking at like the beginning of it um yeah or yeah like if, if you're not gonna go that route right like just condensing like the amount of them is probably like a really good choice because it just starts to feel random at a certain point right and it kind of loses like the uniqueness it's impact it. yeah exactly yeah, yeah and you don't want to like yeah yeah exactly you don't want to like distract too much from from your focal element which is this right like this massive lightning strike thing the lighting by the way on the underside of this floating arch it's thing so good like what the hell like why where did this like 
it like so blizzard good. cinematic grade lighting just <laughs> randomly come from like i have no idea what you've done but under no circumstances should you move this like it just looks so nice it is it is just like all the colors of it too right like you have like the red coming from the bottom and then it kind of transitions yeah i don't know what blues and then like the highlights like oh my god this is like a hero piece lighting on like a random floating arch that we're seeing like it's so good yeah i remember i was taking like screenshots for work once and like I, I took a screenshot and I was like, holy shit, that lighting looks really good. And it was like completely accidental. And then, because I was just placed in a, in a world, right? It wasn't like I'd set the lighting up. I was like, God, that yeah. lighting looks so good. And then I came to do my portfolio shots and I was like, no, I can't replicate it. And I was like trying to, <laughs> and it, but because the screenshot was of a whip thing. So I couldn't post that on my portfolio because I had it finished. And I was like, oh no, and I don't have the level anymore. Like, so yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, whatever you've done here looks great. The lighting in this section and this section are exceptional. Yeah like once the rest of it's filled out it's gonna look awe inspiring and that's when this central piece is going to become really really important and how you mm -hmm. deliver this like i expect this arch this kind of like I, I don't know bandstand looking thing the pantheonic vibe needs to like have the same kind of like visual target as this stone in terms mm -hmm. of sculpting and stuff yeah yeah it's also it's also interesting like we got this like destroyed like arch above it but where is that coming from, right? Like, is that coming from, like, the gazebo, like, underneath it? If so, like, if it's still, oh, like, work in progress, right? Like, that's that's still fair. But, like, I would love to see, like, this this massive strike coming in. And then you see, like, pieces of, like, the gazebo, like, ripped apart. And then you see, like, this floating structure. So that it, like, all ties together. Because right now, I'm not really sure what the relationship is between, like, the, the arches that are yeah. floating. Like, the gazebo underneath it. Yeah, like, and I have the same thing with like the you see the pillars that are kind of broken or broken around it. Like, what were they holding up? Or like, you know, where oh. is? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, maybe that's part of it, but I don't know. Like, I feel like this scent. Like, I love this, but I feel like the the area underneath needs some res rethinking. Almost, you know, this looks fantastic. Yeah. This all oh. looks great. But this I didn't even notice the pillars, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a bit random, isn't it? It needs, it needs some context given to it. Maybe this is the context, but it needs more stuff. I think so. I think so. And then if if you want to sell that context, I think you need to have like two pillars with like a bit of the arch like still intact, mm -hmm. so that we can yeah. we can see visually like oh shit like partially like this stuff is floating, but there's still like stuff attached to like the the floor as well, um, so that we can see like. The cause and effect of it right so that you, yeah. you can tell like what happened to this place yeah yeah but that's looking stunning though see so, and then we had the lava tell you what, like this is obviously my first time like hanging around with the you, the beyond extent crew but oh my god like you guys are seriously talented oh my god got some massively talented people here it's freaking awesome yeah man um let's see we got some breakdowns for the bridge, the modularity as well, then the broken railings. Some cool stuff I think going this here. This is like a little bit like it's gone too into tertiary detail too quicker. Yeah. You see like you got like nice primary forms, and then suddenly, boom, we're looking at like like little mini cracks and like you yep. know, like some more secondary like th like this kind of stuff, but bigger. Like I'd still consider yeah. this tertiary at the moment. And also with tertiary, right? Like, um, it, it kind of depends on what you want to do with it, right? But like with the really small details, I would rather do them in Substance Painter because it, it makes everything like so much more flexible as well or whatever you want to texture it in, right? So that you can have that flexibility and play around with masking. Because I feel like right mm. now what you're probably going to run into is that you're going to take the sculpt, bake it down, and then if you want to change something, you have to go back to the sculpt, right? Especially for like the smaller yeah. details. Um, so give yourself some flexibility there. Um, obviously the yeah. edge where I keep that, but like, yeah, I, I think you're, you're referring to like the noise on this, like this random noise could be made in painter quite quick. Yeah. 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 The random noise and just like the, the surface, like, oh, detail, yeah, I see what right? you're saying. Like, yeah. Yeah. The bump, the subtle bumps and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like all the edges, all the broken pieces, like all the big chunky stuff, mm -hmm. keep that because you want to have that sculpted detail, but then yeah, the smaller stuff yeah i would i would say just give yourself the flexibility of doing that in like painter um but yeah 
Otherwise, I totally agree with Dan. Definitely jumped into the third, the tertiary details a little bit too quick. But it's uh. It still looks good, by the way. It's just yeah, yeah. feedback passion in it, so get, get feedback. Exactly. Um, I'm just looking at them in context, right? So in context, I would say that the the bottom part, especially like when we're seeing when we're looking at this area specifically, right? Um, the bottom part of the pillar, like it looks like really blocky, and especially when the light hits as well, like you can see the seams on the bottoms of the pillars, and that's something that you can probably like remedy with like adding like like a bevel or a couple more edges or something like that. It's a quick yeah. fix, but yeah, it's gonna make a difference. On on this main shot, like I'm I'm a little bit worried about this area here where there's like the, the hole. I don't yeah. know whether I'm just like reading this wrong, but it just looks like a void under there. Like I make sure you put some rocks or something in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something to hold up the weight, right? Yeah. Not just like an empty hole. Because it almost feels like it's like a really thin shell right now. Yeah, which I guess it is, right? Because it's game art. Like, we just need to fake it so that people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smoke and mirrors, baby. <laughs> yeah. I like the um the idea of having, like, these walls and stuff. You see, like, I didn't... I, it took me a while to realize, mm. right? But we are actually in some kind of structure looking out on this at the moment. Yep. Which is kind of interesting to me. I think it's a nice yeah. idea. I'm I'm always a big fan of just having like a foreground element that really grounds us in the image, right? Because now you... I am looking at like that thing that is happening in front of me. It's so good. If, you, if you're gonna do this though, watch your UVs because at the moment like we have like these bricks here, and then they're just kind of like doesn't the yeah stopping. It seems yeah. like this is obviously mapped very annoying to unwrap. But if you're gonna try this, you're gonna have to try and sell it a little bit more, I think, because. I remember I was playing Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and um, I was like in like this brick wall room, a bit like this, and they did this as well. And I was so sad. And then <laughs> I went into a different brick wall room, like, and I was like, oh no, it's going to happen again. And they'd done it properly in the other room. And it just really showed me how much that extra time UVing w must have been important. So whoever was at CD Projekt Red doing the, that like kit clearly ran out of time. <laughs> and was just like, shit, I'm just going to have to flatten map this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the half of the kit was like perfectly UV'd and half like was kind of more flattened. So yeah, if you can, if you have the time, it's definitely worth it for shots like this. Mm -hmm. Or fake it again, you know, just change the angle up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, introduce a little bit depth, depth of field, right? Like maybe maybe mm -hmm. you can get away with that too. But yeah, that yeah. could help. Yeah, no. Totally right. Um, Lloyd is saying that... Uh, oh, Vadim was actually asking a question. Uh, this will be recorded, yes. So every every stream gets added to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, let's see. How did you make the lighting in the sky? That's a very good question, but we didn't make it, so I can't answer that one. I would assume that it is currently just textures. Or particle effects, but no idea. The lightning, Be yeah. Because um, I'm uh, the reason why I say that it's probably textures is because it is so annoying to get like that specific strike going on, right? If you're just waiting around for the particle effect to trigger. I think it um, is a bit. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you could always like do the particle in Houdini and then find the one you want and then render a texture out from that. Like that's. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is a little bit weird. This lightning strike because it doesn't like all lightning arcs ground towards the ground. And at the moment, this one's just kind of like, uh, like going off in five directions, or like yeah, yeah. it started in one Tentacle. and then spread into four. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Like the lightning has like a lot of potential, and then the lightning here as well. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, it's gonna look so good. Make sure you don't um, mess with your lighting too much when you do this, because don't want to risk losing all this oh. lovely stuff. But, <laughs> um, yeah, just trying to sell this, but I guess that'll come after you've solved the other, the other things. Maybe yeah. have the lightning hitting the hitting the sword in the background. You'd think it would arc to the oh. sword, wouldn't it? It could be cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm um, talking about the background. Um, Ryan is asking. Um, our team was curious how you feel about the background behind the large bridge in the background. So basically everything behind like the the broken bridge, I would guess. 
I would bring it further for like I said this big structure here I'd bring it further forward so you have less background to make and deal with because yeah. it's always going to be harder to work at like vista distance um so bring this forward and then you because at the moment I don't love it but I think I'd love it if this came forward and then we the stuff with the swords were that we spoke about earlier was was, yeah. was implemented yeah, I agree. I would love to see like a little bit more parallaxing, right? Like if you have like a layer, it's just not one layer. I want to see like multiple layers of of terrain. Mm -hmm. Um but honestly, what I would say is the same thing as Dan is saying. I would try to cut off as much of the visibility of the background with like putting stuff more like close to the foreground so that you have to do less. Um yeah. honestly, for a scene like this, yeah. I would I would take that shortcut. Because you also don't want to be spending a bunch of time on a background that A, is going to be put in mist and also is not really relevant to like the core of the scene where you could have been doing like a bunch of like other more important work, right? Than improving the background of it. Yep. At this stage, at least. Awesome. And then Very we kind cool. of have a look at the modularity as well. So, yeah. Great stuff, team. We we love like the the lava on the foreground. That's awesome, and in the central focal point, it feels really well lit already. So yeah, great stuff, team. Looking forward to see. Honestly, some more I'm images so I'm soon. so I'm so happy that I get to see these in two weeks because I think if you t if you told me that it would be like oh yeah they have two more months working on it, obviously I'd be happy because it would look even better. But like the fact that I get to see what these look like in two weeks is even more exciting yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, the teams, the teams have been going crazy. And so the, the thing, um, I do want to, I do want to mention this for all the teams that are watching, right? And we said this before, but we do have a deadline for the team challenge. But if you want to really polish it up for your portfolio, you do have some time after that as well. I mean, you have all the time if the team decides to do that, right? Because nice. honestly, like the, the main thing, what matters to us is that you make a killer portfolio piece, right? You have the deadline from us, but if you then decide to take it further, Please do. Because, yeah. To us, the only thing that matters if you is that you make a killer portfolio piece with your team. And then that hopefully gets you close to getting a job or actually getting a job. All right. And then we're going to jump into team number five, Echoes of Elysium. So, in a Dwarven Forge, where the Dwarves produce magical weapons fulfilled with the power of the gods... Wait... We're in a Dwarven Forge where the Dwarves produce magical weapons fulfilled with the power of the gods. Okay, sorry, I just read that wrong. Um, but one day, the location of the Forge was discovered by demons, so they came in and split the anvil apart with the Axe of Destruction. Oh, okay. Axe of Destruction. Let's oh, see cool. this axe. Yes. The axe needs to be bigger, no? If we're talking about this Axe of Destruction coming in... Yeah, we'll that looks see, like, like just that just looks like the axe of Elden Ring. Like I want I want the axe of destruction. Yeah. I want I want to see want that axe. Bigger. 100%. Um yeah, first impressions are really good though. Again, like I love the foreground elements where you have like a two chains coming down to the sides. So good. Um strong color contrast, right? Where you have like the blues and the oranges. And then you got this like dwarven orange it's it's sort of like um taking the colors and kind of splitting it on its head, I think, right? Where it's not like a, a normal forge, like driven by fire, but it's actually um a different kind of energy that is driving it. Um at least yeah. that's the impression that I get. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I think so. I think there's like I, I, I'm honestly captivated by the um the gold trims. Mm. I'm really enjoying them at the moment. I think they should be yeah. integrated more. Which is an absolute massive colossal pain to do. <laughs> I don't know, because um, obviously, like then you have to maybe maybe you just don't do that. Maybe you just keep them poking up. Just adds way more scope. Um, yeah, I think this the axe should be like way bigger. I think what do we know what this is? This like dwarven head is that the entrance, the exit? What is that? I have no idea. So I think it's the forge, right? But well, like... that's the forge, right? But this and this is the anvil. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we how do we get stuff here? How do we get our stuff? You just got some guy running through like sprinting high speed to try and Oh you got Oh also this like bellow. I love the 
the idea of having a bellow, but it just seems a bit like bellow is not interacting with anything, right? Like yeah, normally, it, it look... normally you would have like a bellow directly at the side of the forge to add more circulation to a forge, right? But like now it's just like just like standing there. Like if I if I were to see like bellows, I would have them integrated in like the openings, like in these wall pieces or something like that, right? Because then you could like assume that they like directly integrate with it. But yeah, or like have like have them massive and then like mounting mounted like vertically and have like some kind of um oh. like pipe that like pump pumps that like air into it. Like, like you watch Lord of the Rings, uh, sorry, The Hobbit, um, where they're like trying to um escape like well they're trying to kill smog like all the dwarves oh, and then they we, jump we on the billow this, but... and they like like yeah. a giant billow and they it takes like 10 dwarves to like pump it like, yeah, yeah yeah it should feel it's like big. a massive billow that's coming into it yeah yeah definitely yeah that, that would be awesome actually yeah there's something that is like a bit more integrated right because i feel like yeah. some of the components are like freestanding at the moment where you could you could potentially like well you could easily fix that by having sort of like the the same what is that like a basin or something like that like have oh, the same yeah, sort of basin the, oh this is like where forge, the stuff but... gets poured out isn't it yeah okay yeah this is where the hot molten liquid gets poured into isn't it yeah but then what is how did yeah, they what's that for then yeah yeah, yeah. Then, now that makes me question <laughs> what this is yeah, because you would normally get, like, your hot metal from the forge, and then you have, like, the pouring instrument on the left, right? But yeah, now, so I'm, maybe... now I'm, I'm confused again as to what this is now. Yeah. Because obviously, maybe this is the entrance to where the metal is, like, like uh, melted down, but then, you know, going back to what you said, why is the billow just kind of, like, half hanging around yeah. the entrance? Okay, so that would be like the first thing to to kind of flesh out, right? Like the questions that we have right now, that's basically like the the, the thing that the team needs to focus on first, in my opinion. Um, oh, so Vadim is saying, and he's saying that the back, like a dwarven head, is the forge, but we may have misunderstood the technology. I think I think also the color contrast is nice, right? We were talking about that forge, but it might also throw people for like a. For like some confusion right because I, it is blue I, so what confuses me though like how how do you um so you've like the misunderstanding of like what it is like surely that's like the first thing you do right in that week of pre-production like work out like you know yeah go look up how a forge works you know yeah and like understanding like you like clearly the components like components and yeah it looks like you've Googled Forge at the moment and then picked cool things that you've seen around Forges and not really thought about how they interact with each other. So I think maybe like you've got the assets here, you just need to like recompile them and think about how they all work with each other. Yeah, because my assumption was that you have the Forge in the back and then you have this cauldron that kind of moves back and forth with the chains, right? Um, because I think, I think there's like, there's one chain and the other one... Is that broken or is that like a stalagmite? Sure. But um I'm imagining that there's like a mechanism to take like the hot melted um like stuff from the forge to the cauldron and then the cauldron like pours it into like the pouring bed, right? But then you need to make sure that we understand that this thing moves from the left to the right with like some sort of mechanism, right? Like implement yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. hundred percent um so we need to we need to see that like visually that someone is actually controlling like a lever or like a wheel or something like that and then we see like the mechanism move. Um, yeah and like then... there's there's like if you have the what was it team team two like did this really successfully with their like so um look. with their rails that was like leading into like the little ports right you know i yeah. feel like where's this molten metal coming from remember star wars like um the the droid factory in like episode two and like mm. the padme gets stuck in like one of the big um like big like vat things they're all yeah. going somewhere you know what i mean so yeah we yeah. need to know where it's going so i don't know whether that's just because of the camera angle we've been given or um yeah like a bit more context is there like a hole in this back cliff that like it comes to and from yeah yeah sure. because because you could 
you could like add like more context with it if you if you kind of figure out the mechanism and then have like some sort of like blue um blue glowing metal coming from the cauldron that's like partially like it's still hot like it's still being poured or something like that and maybe it stays hot forever or whatever right but then we can we can have context like moving from one piece to the next piece right so it goes from the forge to the cauldron kind of has the same color so we can make a connection there um but then you would still need to make like the mechanisms work like visually so yeah i would definitely say like maybe raising up like the dwarven head adding adding like another layer to it where you have like a basin underneath it and it's kind of like pouring mm -hmm. that from his mouth into like another layer or something like that oh that would be amazing help. yep and you can just pull all this up right you know just take all of this yeah. pull it up and then build it out in here and then you've got like yeah you don't need to like redo anything you're just pulling it up and then building another piece here Meridul is also um, sharing some thoughts as well. Um, so something for the king head. So the main theme is that they use the power, um, the power of magic bestowed by the gods. Like maybe the king head uh, cave contains magic liquid, and then the dwarves rub that against like their their armor or like weapons, right? Um, so that is really tricky to to like contextually show that that is what they're doing, right? I think with something like this, you have to just go for like the basic understanding, which is like just forging something, right? And then how do people forge? And then like try to get like all the core components of what forging looks like. And you can put a spin on those individual components, but they all still need to be there because that's how we make sense of things being made in a forge, right? Um, so yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be tricky to like deviate from something. Uh, in that in that sort of manner, but yeah, I think I think the team is gonna be it's gonna be taking that into account, and then we'll see what they do with it. Yeah, yeah, I think everything's here, right? It just needs organizing. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because I do, I do like the idea of having like the forge, like be be an actual dwarven head, right? There's something really yep. cool and iconic about that. I do really enjoy that. And I think the golden trims, like you said, I think the team is probably gonna have fun with that a little bit more, right? Because like you can you can kind of use that in all kind of places. And that's gonna look real nice. It gives this like really it adds like grandeur and like um like richness to the whole environment, right? Yeah. It's cool. We also got some cool. some materials and textures as well. So looking Ooh. quite nice. And we got some some pillars, some rocks, and then we got the sculpt as well for like a broken cauldron. Let me see. Oh, that's nice. Oh, so I guess the one that's in the scene at the moment is the white box one. Oh. Yeah, that's looking Interesting. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, I would really taking into account like where you put the damage right because i think with this sculpt right now the damage is going to be on the back side of the cauldron looking from our camera so we're basically not going to see a lot of damage i would honestly just symmetry it and make it so that the cauldron like fell to the other side instead so that we can see like the the damage of the cauldron i'm um, just like a quick thing there but that's going to make a huge difference to me mm-hmm And then you got the barrels as well that you're looking at right now. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Yep. Yeah. The albedo read on these rocks is fantastic. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think th this is, this is going to be a thing for every team, right? Like get stuff into the engine and then tweak accordingly, right? Because working with multiple people, um, you're always gonna have to like balance like the assets from one person to like to like something, right? So for example, the barrels, um, they kind of look like a bit bright at the moment, but yeah, you could like really easily change that up as well. No, mm. most of it looks good though. Um, yeah, I, I'm just yeah, like a, a sucker like, for um... like the, the the standard like color contrast, right? Like the the blues and the oranges. I don't know. It's so cliche, but I like it so much. Definitely it. bring this up to like here. 
Like I'm just doing like a quick paint over here. If you bring mm -hmm. this like area here up to like to the bottom of the dwarf's head, like sits there. I don't, oh, can you not see what? Oh, you can't see what I'm painting. Yeah, yeah. And then the mouth would kind of be like here, right? And that allows yeah. you to like pour stuff down. Oh no, that looks that's starting to look bad. Um, and then we have um, <laughs> like you would then be able to do something like this. And then that, yeah, you just that have like, like a has like a, Then this has like kind of like a a spout or whatever. Or like yeah, this is all just lava here, and it's all being fueled. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like um yeah, just it's basically just taking like the the cauldron, like that area feels really logically thought out right now. It just it it feels like it should have been more around a forge and actually around a cauldron. So I would I would definitely agree that that would be like a quick fix, right? Because you can easily raise up like a dwarven head and kind of work around that. Um But yeah, I'll let the team decide on what they want to do. Because they could also go the, the other route of like changing the, the actual mechanism, right? And maybe they found like a really effective way of showing that and maybe that's going to work out for them. So, yeah, some yeah. like rails that like run along the top here, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the exactly. cauldron like sitting here in like the foreground. It's like being taken away to like a different forge. Yeah. Maybe there's like a hole in here. There's a lot you can do with it. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, but no. Like, really great stuff, team. Like, um, yeah. I really like the gold trim aspect. I, I like the color contrast. So, yeah. Excited to see what you're all going to come up with in the next next couple of weeks. Yeah, this kind of like paneling stuff, the gold trim paneling. Me and Lloyd yeah. spend a lot of our day looking at this kind of stuff all the time. So... <laughs> It's really nice to see something quite ornate because we're so used yep. to seeing sci-fi it's very nice yeah yeah it just makes it different right it has like a, mm. a nice twist to it yeah awesome great stuff team and then we're gonna go to team six the hexagonators so they're working on an old forge lost in time now being restored to its glory by the people of today the ones great mechanisms in this room now slowly being forgotten okay Interesting. So we're kind of we're kind of getting like um like a sci-fi twist on it, right? Like a very very current or like semi-future like twist on something that they found in the past. Um, you see, the mechanism's been established quite clearly for this one. Yeah, it's cool to see. Yeah, yeah. We've got like a lot of a lot of things that need to be there for for it to work like logically, right? Yeah. Um. That's awesome to see. I think if you if you didn't tell me the story, like it would be really hard to convince me that this is like an old forge that has now been transmuted into like a, a new forge by like the people of the current day. Um, but I mean, it's not taken away from like if you just look at like the image itself, right? It it has like a really good impression. Mm -hmm. I think the um the glass here is this meant to be like lava on the other side of this glass? I'm not too sure. Is it glass? Like I guess it's glass. It doesn't read this material. Know. Just doesn't read yeah. great for me at the moment. Um, I'm sure. It feels it feels like stained glass, right? Yeah, it so. does. I feel like I'm. Yeah, but it's like um, is it like a is that a cells one? <laughs> and that's just like had its like levels clamped. I think it needs like. A little bit more um like direction put into it like so the material reads much clearer on it because i'm yeah. not sure what it is right now yeah exactly my my thoughts exactly on that one too um and it's also because it's so prominent in the scene right your eyes go directly towards it and then it being like so confusing because like it could be that this is like we're underground and like we're buried like behind like a, a sheet of glass or something like that and it's a lava we're looking at right yeah but it could also at this point be just like a really cool light installation as well i'm not sure yeah i i, I it's hard to tell because of the scale read as well right like if you look at this thing um where is it oh god i keep sorry like um, <laughs> is that like a trolley jack or like a it's like yeah, a pallet yeah. jack or something looks like it that's like 
when you look at like the size of like one of these like tiles i don't know whether this is massive or that's tiny i just feel like it needs some consolidation yep because this all reads nice this all yeah. reads nice but like the floor i think is throwing some stuff out of whack at the moment mm -hmm. would you have like a less reflective floor because I feel like there's there's so much reflectivity going on, and I'm imagining that the rest of it, like the rest of the the assets in the scene, they also all look metal. So I feel like we're gonna be like overwhelmed by the amount of metal by the time that this is all like yeah textured up. Pro probably a good way of like you could. I would start by see this is like quite thin. Yeah. I would I would make that not thin. I would make it at least go as wide as this. You know, it should be like this wide, really. And then mm -hmm. from here, maybe step it down. And maybe have like some height variation in here. Mm. And yep. then flip these ramps the other way. Yep. So then so then you are, you end up with these like really cool like shapes. These like cool triangles being made here. It yep. looks like it's like reinforcing like the main walkway that comes along. Yeah. And then you can place all your stuff. And then that helps like break it up. And then you can... And maybe this is like metal, but then you, you can have it all stay metal then, but you've broke it up in a different way. Yeah, so at the moment yeah. it just feels like really, um, it's, well, it's flat, isn't it? So we just need to change the height of that a little bit. And like, these are doing a good job, but they're off to the side and being hidden. So flip them 180, just put a line in here, extrude it down and then push them up against that. And then it'll feel like it's reinforcing. And then this great thing, which is really cool. Um, I like that. Maybe you then just bring this out so it's a little bit thicker, so you have like a 70-30 split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just more variation in the shapes and like the elevations and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That could definitely work. Um, where the great glow gone? Was that an idea? Oh wait. Oh, I guess I guess in the middle here once upon a time there was like uh, some glows coming out of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah especially yeah, because back. because because with the with the shapes that you're doing then, right? You're adding like importance to the center again by like elevating it up. So you don't necessarily need to then again like emphasize it with like another layer of like, hey, look at this section. And look at it go all the way towards like the the forge. I do think though, like having a subtle, maybe not a super big glow, but a subtle one would be nice because I think it will help light the center of the room because it's going to be hard getting light in over here. Mm, um, yeah. Just because of how like it's going to be slightly up and miles like away from every lights. wall. So like, yeah, no, nothing crazy, but like, don't make it like knock your socks off. But it should be like a. a I do think a subtle glow will help break the um break it up and like yeah just kind of light that middle area a tiny bit yeah 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 i'm also seeing some like statues on the side i'm gonna skip ahead to see oh wait oh we do have some like glow in the middle we didn't even look through all the images yet <laughs> okay oh my god let's see so we got we got some statues as well oh yeah i am um... I'm going to double down on my feedback to do the elevated center with the ramps leading into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good shout, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, there's... The, the, the thing that I keep stumbling on is that I'm not really sure, like, what age we're in. Right? It feels, like, very yeah, futuristic. But and then, then we have a pallet jack from... from yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have like the statues, which I mean, they're still like block out, right? But they they kind of feel like very historical. I mean, they could also be like sci-fi, I guess, right? I mean, no. Uh, to be fair, they have a glowing light in them, so they're probably like more sci-fi-ish anyway. Um, but then the four elements always feel like current as well. Yeah, it just it feels like there's too many focal points. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's so much going on and not much happening you know what i mean there's no real function to the room it feels like a fancy museum at the moment yeah there's so much yeah. you know what i mean it feels like a you know what i mean we got like this 
crazy big like furnace in the middle we've got this yep. really nice i've forgotten what you'd call it like a vat i guess then you got statues and then we got like all this scaffolding and we got this other like vat here and then it's like what 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 are we doing here like what's the purpose of this room i yeah. think that needs to be thought about yep can i can i double down on your idea then because you wanted to make like a centerpiece like stand out right so we're we're raising like the central walkway what or if we well then... we're not we're not raising the central way but we're dropping the, or floor the, the sides, side. right? Yeah, yeah 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 um but what if we then also like add another layer of elevation to like the actual working area where like the area around oh, the forge is like another okay. like layer of elevation and then we so, like we yeah something something like that and then you kind of have like all the functional equipment like in the back of the room so that you can introduce like hey this is where stuff gets done and then the rest of it is like in function of making the the look the the room look pretty yeah like this yeah and then this yeah. is like the extra like that obviously is mirrored yeah 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 Something like that. And then, like, try to think about, like, how this thing is going to work, right? Because right now we have a cauldron, which is going to pour, like, molten, like, um, like, molten metal into something. W what is that something going to be, right? Because we have this, like, really fancy looking thing at the back, but, like, what, how... What if we cut this, and this becomes, like, a, a pool at the back, and then these run along here? Yeah. And then pour it over, like, the edge. This is, like, a... And then the glass only comes up to like here. And then this is kind of like a shelf. And this is like all like a big open top pool. Yeah, yeah like, it's like a, a dam of water. poured in the top. Yeah, and then it comes, then this is like the processing unit for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these all go higher. Like this string like pulls up. So like at the moment we've got like maybe too many connecting points. Like what if we just um, redesign this slightly so that the like the hook went straight into like here so then we can yep. lose all this height and then we can maybe lose like half of this height and that should bring this up to about like here and then it can come in and then get poured yeah yeah i think whatever the solution to to it is right like the the problem is definitely that it, it lacks like a bit of like functionality right like what is happening yep. here like where where is all the work happening and reflecting that visually it's probably going to be the biggest challenge for this team um yeah because because also like you're you're again dealing with like the layering right you want to show something historical that has been like adjusted but then they're still using it as like a functional furnace but then yeah it is going to get a little bit messy right but just make sure that like it could actually function that if we were to walk into this room and we're like working the furnace that we know how it's going to work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's have a look at some of the other images then. Um, so we got the statues, we got the scaffolding as well, which I'm not sure. I don't think like the scaffolding adds anything, right? Like the scaffolding on the right. No, I I'd lose the scaffolding to be honest. I think it adds a lot of noise to an already busy scene. Yeah, like, exactly. Cool, but I don't think it works. And just like I think I think simplifying it, right? Because that's what yeah. we were trying to do as well. Like we were trying to like maybe like add some interest to the floor because it feels like relatively flat right now. But then also like simplifying like the the, the, the structure of the scene itself. Yeah. Yeah, I completely I completely agree. I think this hero yeah. center if you look go to the last image as well. Mm -hmm. Like this hero center center area here needs some kind of like area of interfacing that, you know what i mean at the moment like how do i interact with this yeah Just, like i'm not really sure at the moment I don't yeah know it's it like that's what that's what i was saying before right you have the cauldron that is supposed to pour like something into something else but it's like where does it go like where where does this like thing on the left i don't even know what that is like where does that yeah go? like yeah i have no idea does it lower you... like what would be fucking well cool and i just thought of this idea what if you add that layer in even more and you have holes in the floor and then it drops down in like to like pick up the lava underneath the floor and then lift it up 
but then i guess where does that go you know what i mean <laughs> it's like yeah like what's the point yeah. in like having a big book that maybe it put maybe it like trolleys it out along with dollies out of the place yeah it would look sick just i'm imagining like the 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 final breakdown right where you have like the things in motion and it's like scooping up the lava and the lava is still like pouring out of the sides or something yeah like that. That would look sick, but then we still we still have the issue of like, okay, but where does it go now, right? Because it kind of would feel weird if it just like goes out again, and then we have like the center thing, which then yeah, just like, becomes is this the like storage okay. plant. Yeah, like what now? Do, now the store. Yeah, now the center thing is called into question as to what this does. Yeah, it's just like okay, is this like the control panel for this whole operation now? Like yeah, but now we'll we'll leave that up to the team, right? It's just really thinking about like the functionality of it and seeing if you can tie it all in together. Um, it's definitely going to be a challenge, but I think you guys can do it. Oh yeah, they will Let's be see. able to know it for sure. The cool statues as well. I think those are going to look sick, right? Like they kind of, they kind of like elevate this place of like, maybe they kind of add this like very religious angle to it, to me, where it's like, oh, maybe this is like part church, part, part forge. Like this is like part of their religion or something interesting but yeah still lots of stuff to to think about team but yeah keep on trucking and if yeah if we can help with anything just give us give us a shout cool and then i think we're we're ready to move on to the last team who are called the anvil amigos uh in the heart of a mountain concealed within the heart of the ancient caverns lay the forge of the valin the master dwarf blacksmith okay cool Got a couple of dwarven uh, inspired pieces here. So this is cool. And we got this going on. Nice. Maybe let's peruse like the images before we start like talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> like a little side area too. Okay. Okay. And that's like the, the final image. Cool. Okay. First impressions, Dan. I really like it. I think the um the ceiling has a lot of potential. You know, I think that that's a really creative way of... It like reminds... Weirdly, the lighting reminds me of... Um, I was in a train station once. And... Um, it was like i'd like some exposed like brick on the like exposed rock on the top and it was like it looked like this like they, they were really clever with the blue and orange mm -hmm. yeah I'm, i i don't know i just i just quite like it I, I, i'm you can see clearly what's like whip and what isn't you know with the the thing but i think this this team has done an exceptional job of like really selling that this is where things get forged you know they got this yep. big cauldron that's gathering the stuff and then it's being poured down and like you know this is what i was talking about for one of the other teams like having a bigger more integrated anvil almost mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah I, I really like that yeah me too man um i i obviously got some like context right but there were like separate areas that the team were working on and they wanted to make it like feel like they were but i really feel like this is just like a like a forge slash like beer hall you know like it kind of has yeah. that mood already where it's like oh you got like the dwarves coming together like and even like friday afternoon when you go to the pub like no this is their pub they just drink to the table next to it you know it's, <laughs> instead of on the forge table and it kind of has that hear, like the supervisors shouting at them like for drinking on the job but that's what they do in it so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely uh, <laughs> capturing the culture there i love that yeah yeah like There's a honestly... lot of repetition like you see these like these like side things i don't know what you call them i guess yeah like the door great or yeah yeah uh, another one of them would be nice like a different shape you know just something some variation is a bit repetitive at the moment yeah I don't know if you'd agree with that. Um, maybe that repetition's yeah. good in this context, but yeah, I think I think so too. Like the the team, the teams themselves, they had like some really interesting ideas of adding like astrological objects and like very like varying the shapes of um, those grates and, and maybe some other elements based on like 
different like objects in the sky. I don't know if that's still like what they're going with, right? Because it's been a while since we talked. But like something where you could like link the culture of these dwarves to like breaking up the repetition could be like really nice. Because yeah, yeah maybe at like, the moment... there's like a, maybe a staircase, maybe like one a way in or out. Like maybe just hit the middle one, and then you just remove the grate in, and then oh, we have a staircase. Maybe well, like yeah, but it's staircase. on the other side, right? So yeah. maybe maybe if we if we think about it, maybe make it like a little bit more you know, symmetrical. Maybe it's right? just we like a smaller staircase? staircase, like to a storeroom kind of thing, rather than like a yeah. grand staircase entrance. It's just like a smaller one to take you to like some other thing. Yeah, and like cool. honestly, you have the staircase already, right? So it's just like cutting cutting up oh, like yeah, one of the medieval sections. Yeah. Uh, modular sections and just like making a like a, a staircase that goes down instead yeah um yeah 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 just do that just take yeah. one of these and just make it look like one of them's just heading down yeah i don't know what i don't know let the let the viewer then guess what that is maybe it's where they live maybe it's like where spare tools are maybe it's like yeah, yeah. Be, um, um, plenty of things yeah we got uh, some of the team members in the chat as well. Um, sounds good. The shapes are very placeholder at the moment. Um, and then someone is saying, this is not from the team, um, I think. Selectites Selic would get knocked off, no? Um, with a moving molten tub? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, like the mechanism... I don't know if the mechanism moves front to back. I don't think it does. So maybe the stalactites are, like, safe. <laughs> yeah, I think they're safe there. I do see your concern, though. That I don't think dwarves are ones for health and safety, to be honest. I don't think the idea of a looming um, impalement is something that would Yeah, yeah, they live with a danger. So. Especially when forging, you know? You're not going to think about that. <laughs> I do think that needs a good, a good... Obviously, I think it's due to happen, but a good sculpt pass on that top bit. I think the... Yep. Where does the... Where does the cauldron go, though? Because, you know, to even... like I, I don't know who it was in chat that raised that. The fact that they've raised that shows me that it's not clear where the cauldron goes because they've thought it might go that way. That is true. You know, I think it's I think it's the the beam above it, right? It's yeah, almost where like... does it go from there? Like, there's two wheels that like spin it. Yeah. Or like, is it go? There's nowhere to go left or right because of the pillars and the wheels. The pulleys are kind of not, and the mechanism doesn't look like it's ready to pour it. So I think when the lod lod zero like final lot pass happens for that big cauldron like maybe just look at look at that stuff again how that works oh lloyd is bringing up like an even better question like how do they fill the vat up yeah that's what i mean like where does it like does it go somewhere to be filled up and yeah. then come over here maybe it goes to that other room we were just looking at <laughs> no no they, know, they have to they have to go to like their local lava pool and like scoop it up with like their their beer mugs you know <laughs> yeah 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 this is like <laughs> This dwarf has to walk five miles a day to get just one <laughs> mug of lava. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could make some sort of, like, mechanism, like, some sort of, like, gate, like, above it, right? That they can then control and then, like, pour some lava mm. into it. But then, like, the fucking beam is going to be in the way, so never mind. And then and then you could make the argument to, like, well, why do you have the cauldron there in the first place if there's, like, a gate there? Maybe, that maybe very you true. just yeah. get rid of the cauldron, dare I say, since it's not even been started yet. Or I hope it hasn't. If I'm coming up with this idea, and then yeah, let me see if I could do a quick. Oh, what if over. what if, yeah, what if you could have like instead of like the gate last like in the ceiling, what if you could have like a little like, or mouth or something like that, right? With like a little yeah, yeah. thing, and then it just pours into. Yeah, yeah, like comes down this. Yeah, the Alex, Alex from the team is saying the same thing as well. So maybe they can put like a hole behind the wall, and then with some stuff pouring out like yeah. a fountain or something. I think yeah. that would be very interesting, right? Because. Yeah, and you could you could then make that like really ornate as well. You could still do like a like a sculpture around it too, but like have the mechanism visible. It'd be cool. Like that. Yep. Love it. Like we're pouring blood right now. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> artist's blood. <laughs> yeah, let's see. But that's uh yeah. Oh, Andrea is saying uh, we need more beer barrels. <laughs> Sure do. I'll sure like do. Set up for him. I think this central like walkway needs breaking up a little bit as well. At the moment, it seems a bit weird that they've got this amazing space and they've just chucked a few stools in there. 
Yeah. 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 Um, it's very linear at the moment, this path. And I don't necessarily dislike that, but I do think it needs some kind of... Like, we've got a lot of parallel lines right now. Like, yeah. How do we... Like, like hundreds of parallel lines. And, like, the, the thing... Then this is the thing that we brought up uh, previously, right? Like, if you wanna if you wanna showcase like an area of significance, like you can do some things there by like elevating the middle section, or like even having like an, another trim around it that like kind of signifies like, hey, this is a forge area, right? And you kind of make it like look nice and ornate with the trim sheets that you have. Some something to just break that up, right? That you have like these strong lines going into like a shape at the end. Yeah, like you could do like. You could like run the trim in instead and then you could also like integrate this so then rather than it being like a 90 degree maybe it comes out like this maybe not like a perfect triangle but maybe it's like it comes out like a little bit more boxy like it steps yeah. down and then maybe i mean one thing that would be amazing you'd have to get a lot of ref for it right but maybe you you do like you like pull this up and then it it integrates in with the floor mm. and you put you put your like um you put like your fillets here like they'd be fillets and then you could um like Dude, and maybe the quenching bath like you know where they drop the hot iron and it's just like it slides into the water or something like that yeah Oh yeah, and like this is where it all like drains off when they're done, and there's like a big tr drain here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like suddenly we filled this big space with something. Maybe this yeah. like maybe this turns into like a grating, and like it drains yeah. under here and comes exactly. out. Yeah. There's there's some elements yeah. that you can play around with, and I think I think the guys already have like all the elements that are needed to like build all this stuff anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's some cool stuff you can do with this. Um, let's see to to the chat as well. So Justin is saying maybe add a railing on the floor to show the crucibles being moved back and forth. The structure looks something like these mechanisms used to lift storage containers in the dockyards. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was going for as well. Like um, the the structure above, like the the cauldron, like it just kind of looks like it has like that very modern like um. What is it like warehouse kind of look if they're moving like a crane through a warehouse or something like that yeah um you could add a lava room to create more depth behind it yeah that could be cool like um that's kind of what dan was showing earlier right but you have like a, a dam that kind of opens up and maybe you see like the glow of like a massive pool of lava behind it i don't think it necessarily needs to be there you could make like an ornamental like a really ornamental like pouring thing as well but i mean that's up to the team really um let's have a look at some other stuff here there's currently a system to tip the bucket but it's hidden behind the shape yeah that's the issue right like i can i can kind of see glimpses of it but then you need to make sure that you can kind of see it from like this angle as well where, where maybe like a hook is attached to like the back of the the back of the cauldron and that's like pouring it like up and down right but yeah what if it what if it poured through here right in like a channel that's like built into the wall and then drops in through the bottom of this and oh, it like lights cool. up all inside here yeah 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 so it's like it's There's not just like a, a fountain space. yeah yeah but it's actually built into the wall that could be cool i think the main takeaways here is like more needs to be done to like integrate this into the floor more and the shape and then the cauldron kind of needs to go and the the distribution yep. of lava should come from some kind of like reservoir that pours down the wall. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the whole forge area, like definitely like taking another stab at it and just making it feel like more important, like a little bit more well thought out. Then I think I think you're on a roll there. Um, and then together with some of your suggestions, Dan, by having like uh, a staircase going down. And like just really opening up the space a oh, little yeah, like bit here, and like yeah. giving giving like more of a a world feeling to it, right? Rather than just a hall. It'd yep. be really interesting. Oh cool. Great stuff. Um I'm also the last thing that I'll bring up from my side is like the, the lights on the roof, right? I'm really curious what the team is gonna do with that. 
Um, I know that we discussed like some options there, but yeah, I'm just really curious what that is going to be. Um, because there's a lot of potential with the roof, right? Especially in terms of like color contrast and the shapes. Like, that's going to be a bit of work, but it's going to look kick-ass if, if done correctly. So, forward to it. No any any final thoughts from, from your end, Dan? No, no, I think we've given them plenty, <laughs> plenty to think about. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for all their hard work. Like, it's freaking amazing to see, like, everyone's work today. Um, we've looked through some killer pieces. Like I said yep. to, to Dan before the stream, like, I was surprised by just, like, the, the amount of, like, talent and skill, like, on display today. Um, I honestly wasn't expecting it. Like, and I'm always surprised by, by, like... Yeah, people in the second week, because yeah, it's the second week of production that these teams are in. It's just yeah, it's stunning. wild. Two weeks, I keep forgetting it. It looks like a month in. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. So yeah, thanks everyone for showing everything that they had today. Um, if there's anything that we can help with, like talk to us after the stream as well. Um, I wish everyone the best of luck, and also Dan, thank you so much for being here and coming on. Um, thank you for having me and like um i feel very welcomed by this incredible community and i'm very grateful to to now be part of it and i can't wait to stay active and see what everyone gets up to yeah that's awesome man and uh yeah it's gonna be fun to see you um back on the final judging as well where you're gonna throw down some uh some points for all the teams it'll be exciting yeah, man for sure yeah, it'll be really good all right everyone thank you so much for being here and yeah, best of luck. We'll see each other soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.